He's never kissed a guy, but he's gotten like hella blowjobs from dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's like, you know, I draw the line, bro. Hego. <laughs> Guys, I took a week off social, actually two weeks off social media. Um, yeah, because a couple things happened. I think I've never talked about this on a podcast channel. My uh, Instagram, I don't know, bro. They fucking hate me now, you know? Yeah. I posted a photo with Jeff Caster running away into the wilderness. It was beautiful. It was artistic. Yeah. Taken down because it was sexually gratifying. Were we naked? I mean, from the back, you can see your butts, you know? But it's not, that's not the purpose. It was not meant to be sexually gratifying. It was meant to show the freedom we have as two guys in the wilds running away, carefree. It's a statement, a political statement that men, no matter what race, no matter what age, no matter what sexuality, can express themselves and be free from societal norms. That's the intention of my post. It was not sexually gratifying, but get it, it was taken down. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Let's take it easy on Instagram. Let's post a nice little family-friendly story where I'm taller than my friend Mo in a Speedo. And it was also taken down. And my Instagram account was temporarily banned. I thought I'd lost my Instagram account. I was in a very bad mood for a week. I felt like the world is against me. So I decided I took it, uh, to take a week off social media. And the thought that I'm gonna look back in my life when maybe my mom is not there with me anymore and I could have spent time with her, uninterrupted. But instead, I'm working, you know? <clears throat> hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up this old time Just put it all behind Have you ever done that? Take some time off social. Sure, and I remember when this happened to you, uh, you handled it quite well, by yeah. the way. I could tell deep down, though, you were kind of burning yeah. inside, because I think you do really do a good job posting online. You don't try to be too sexual on there, and Instagram does allow some nudity. That's what I'm like really having a problem with right now, because I, I mean, you see like the guys, you know what, I started posting those more revealing photos after Utopia, because yeah. I was inspired by our fellow friends, Romeo Twink, Mo. They all did like jerk off scenes in there, you know. And I was they promote their OnlyFans on Instagram. So I was like, you know what? I've never done that. I don't really promote my OnlyFans on Instagram. Let's try it. Very subtle. The, the result was that I almost lost my Instagram, which to me makes it feel like, Jeff, is it me? Do they have something against me personally? Is it my skin color? Is it the fact that I wear dangly earrings? Like, what is it, you know? I think the dangling earrings <laughs> is a part of it. Yeah. Um, I think you do have a few haters, you know what I mean? But yeah. anybody that's popular is gonna have a few haters. Yeah. There yeah. was a part with you and I, it was a little suggestive, I thought, mm -hmm. you know, when you were on top of me on the car. I see that, I see that. <laughs> you know? But that photo, I mean, I'm gonna show you. It's, I, I also truly believe that Instagram is censoring specifically things that are homoerotic okay. from experience from looking at there's articles i made a full video about this on my main channel there's articles about uh this lesbian couple for example they have a child and they post a photo with their child and it was taken down because so many people reported it and they got some homophobic comments and stuff and instagram took it down because it was too controversial whereas if it was a straight couple having a kid it would be fine you know what i mean right what's up with that that's really what I'm questioning. That's the one thing that upsets me because I feel like once there's something that doesn't fit what you're used to mm -hmm. and that doesn't fit your beliefs or your norms or whatever you're comfortable, whatever you're comfortable with, then um, it gets reported and, and people hate on that, which is kind of fucked up if you think about it, you know? Maybe that's part of it too, that it's almost a little odd to the eyes of some people. Yeah. So that they, it, they right away think that it's too sexual, but if it was a guy and a girl, it's beautiful to them. There's a lot of like, and I talked about this a lot, there's a lot of like these double standards, you know, for example, if we made out right now, people would be like, oh my God, are, exactly. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind, yeah, it'd be cool. But like, people would be like, oh my God, such a big deal, are they gay, what type, what's to do with them? Yeah. If two girls make out at a club, you know, it's hot. 
hot. You see freaking like it it, 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 I'm not, it is hot. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very hot. You know, <laughs> like uh, Scarlett Johansson made out with uh, whatever actor she made out with. And people were like, oh my God, they're so cute. They're so brave and whatever, you know. And nobody's questioning, oh, is she a lesbian now, you know. So I think there's lots of double standards also with women on TikTok. Girls can shake their booties on TikTok. There's very sexual. I mean, the, the main purpose of a lot of these TikTok girls is like, having things that are sexually gratifying. I mean, it's almost at the like borderline jerk up material for some guys, which I'm all for. I mean, I love it. Yo, I've seen some of these girls, it's fucking hot what they're posting. I just want to have more freedom that like, it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy, you can just post that and there's not going to be different criteria applied to different people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty reasonable to ask. I don't know, is you think there's like a stigma on guys that a lot of girls think like, oh, they're supposed to be masculine and tough and physical so. and kissing is, I don't know. It's all yeah, I mean, you made the video, you made a video with Travis Bryan. I saw where Travis br pranked you, kissing yeah. your straight, kissing my straight friend. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I read some comments, it's like, you know, um, <laughs> if he's straight, he's a re- Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of straight, whatever. But um, he's, he posted the video, right? And you yeah. actually showed the kiss. I didn't see the actual kiss. But he showed the kiss on YouTube. Yeah. And then it was 18 plus for oral, like inappropriate sexual acts or something, you know? So do such an innocent. Bro, innocent. I almost wonder, I almost want to make this, I almost want to put this to the test and make a video with Vida, my girlfriend. Yeah. To see if I make out with her if it gets 18 plus too. That's because I think it wouldn't, you know? Yeah. And it just sucks that at this point there's a difference between whether you kiss a guy or a girl. Like, how is this, like, it, why, why are things 18 plus? It's to, to protect our youth. So you want to protect our youth and the children from seeing two men kissing each other, you know? Right. Which I think at this point should be something no different than seeing a straight couple kissing it on the streets, you know? Nobody's gonna say it. I mean, I kiss my dad all the time right on the lips, you know? How do you feel about that? Well, that maybe is a Tennessee <laughs> thing. <laughs> we just show affection to each other. I like that. Do you really though? No, okay. No, no, because like there was a big scandal about what was it, Tom Brady when he kissed his child. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. that's such bullshit, bro. Yeah. Like, come the fuck on, man. Like, my my dad kissed me on the lips when I was younger. We stopped at some point, you know. Last year. But why did we? You know what I mean? Like, why is it weird? It's only weird because we make it weird. Right. You know, because why? Why not? You know, my my dad loves me. I love my dad. Like, why not? You know, in Italy, I think they do that. You know, you have the the Italian thing. You go like ah. Oh. And then you go like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think they do that shit. So, I love that. Yeah. You know, I was already going along that route in modeling where I was becoming more and more comfortable uh, being able to display affection with guys. And yeah. then I met you and they just went through the roof. Okay. You know? I mean, because your experience with guys, I think it has definitely <laughs> exponentially. There's a different correlation between pre-Mario, post-Mario. You know what I mean? That's right. So you've never, I mean, you'd never like kissed a guy before. Correct. No. Okay. 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 You know, we talked about that in modeling. You know, the photographers get on your dick. It's so funny. It's so funny that this dude, like, he's never kissed a guy, but he's gotten like t hella blowjobs from dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, you know, I draw the line, bro. You know, like a little pegging, like little anal plugs, all good. You know, but like kissing, hell no, that's gay, bro. You know, that's it's like, gay, bro. yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. The modeling world just brought me into it, and now, Indeed, now yeah. I love it, you know? Yeah, I see that. I could be your photographer. I think that's what's gonna have to happen, you know? You know? I feel more comfortable with that. If we ever hooked up or something, we'd have to role play. You're a photographer, I'm an innocent model, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you become a sexual predator, you know? I'm like, this is for you. Do you want me to help yes. your career? Yes. Do you want a little dick? Do you think uh, Haynes is gonna hire a tiny penis? <laughs> Haynes, that's good. You didn't go for Versace, you know, went for Haynes. Good, good. Fruit of the Loom? No. Fruit of the Loom. I've always wanted to be in a Fruit of the Loom campaign, bro. I see my, 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 my face on the Fruit of the Loom billboard in like Soho in Times Square, you know. So I'm gonna suck your dick and it's gonna be for you. This is for you, me sucking your dick, okay? Okay, okay. As the photographer. I feel that, I feel that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You good at that role playing, okay? I think I could get into that, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, yeah. close your eyes. Yeah. Let's make an OnlyFans exclusive <laughs> called Roleplay, where you're a photographer Ooh. and you sexually harass me and suck me off. Yes. Yes. Wow. Swap up, swap up, swap All right, then um, let's move on to another topic because I want to be <laughs> do more worldly topics that are current. And I want to talk a little bit about, about, about COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Worst idea ever. Wow. That splits the fucking world. No, yeah. but like, I got the COVID vaccine. 
Um, and it's very controversial. Maybe you saw, you see Joe Rogan, what he said, like yeah. Joe Rogan <laughs> made a comment about like, if you're 21 years old or like whatever, in your 20s and you're healthy and you eat healthy, you shouldn't get the COVID vaccine. Um, and then it was a huge backlash. People were like burning him. And I feel like COVID at this point, I've, I've never, I've just read, I've never talked about COVID on social media because it's so freaking, it's so polarizing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, I made one, in, one Instagram story where I just said, when COVID started, very beginning, I was like, okay, this thing's happening, but it's not gonna stop me from being active. Oh my God. And I referred, what I referred to was like, I came from a workout, I ran for a run, and I said, I'm not gonna become a couch potato on what, and watch Netflix all day and become fat. I'm still gonna stay active. The, 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 the uh, what's it called, like the backlash, not flashback, the backlash I got following that was insane. People hated me for that comment. So since then I've been, I've been laying very low, but I did now get the vaccine. No. I'll say a couple things. First, if you listen to what Joe Rogan said, cause I was listening to the podcast, First, I don't like reprimanding people just for speaking, mm -hmm. speaking their yeah. mind. I didn't really feel like he was giving like a command to 21 year olds to no. not get it. It was more like, hey, if a 21 year old asked me, I would say a 20, he was kind of saying within the context of a 21 year old is healthy enough that they don't need it. And he said, he clarified later and said, if we're talking about other people that yeah. he could transmit it to, or he or totally, she, totally, it's yeah. a different story. Even if he's wrong, don't you want people to say what the fuck they want for the most part? Cause like totally. you don't have any discussion back and forth. Yeah, it is difficult though. I see that too, man. Like, ah, bro, it's so difficult. But you difficult. know Tim Dillon is not, he's not a fucking health expert and he's not giving health expert advice. He's just giving his opinion and he's trying to be funny. And totally. he's fucking hilarious. It is crazy though how much influence like uh, big like personalities have. You know, like for example, with the, with the vaccine, they had to pay The Rock, like however, like mil like a lot of money to say that the vaccine's cool. To really? hang up. Yeah, man. Because like nowadays, that's how the world works. Is like a lot of people are so easily influenced by what people say. You know, so like especially with somebody you look up to. You know, so if you're a big fan of The Rock, which I am, no. I think he's dope. If he tells me I should get the vaccine. Fucking look at the vaccine. No, like, <laughs> by, the way, by the way, that's why I got the vaccine. Just because the rock. Told me <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But like, I, I see this. It's a difficult thing, man. It's a difficult thing between it, say, okay, the vaccine is controversial. We don't know really what's happening. Like even, you know, we can assume it's safe, but there's a lot of controversy. Nobody knows for sure. Nobody can tell you hundred percent that, you know, what's going to happen with it. So what if Tim Dillon said something that is like scientifically 1 million percent false information that could be harmful, you know? If Tim Dillon said, oh, you should be drinking uh, hydrochloric, whatever Trump said, you know, something that's yeah. clearly wrong to get a bigger penis. Yeah. And he made this podcast to predominantly male audience and they all drink that shit, hoping to get a bigger schlong dong, yeah. and then they all die. Should he be able to voice that opinion? If it's just, if he truthfully believes that's yeah. correct, you know? So this is just my opinion yeah. I'm going to give here. This is not based on anything except for <laughs> okay, my opinion. Okay. I think people should be able to say whatever the fuck they want. Okay. Unless you're directly inciting violence. Uh, Tim Dillon's a comedian. He's mm -hmm. funny first. And, and that I think is the big difference right. too. I think in the context of being a comedian, you should be able to be overly sarcastic. You should be able to, and I'm taking this even a little bit further, I know this is very, once it hurts somebody, it's like kind of difficult, bro, but like, I think you should be making jokes about anything. I yeah. have like, I have experienced sexual assault and I think we should be openly talking about those things so, so they also don't become so untouchable, almost like more threatening. I think humor can help us cope with things that are scary too, you know? Exactly. So yeah, if he's clearly sarcastic, bro, but like, you gotta understand, bro, people don't get sarcasm. <laughs> Right. I make so many sarcastic comments on YouTube or jokes and people think it's like 100% and it just goes over their head. So it's, yeah. You just can't difficult. protect, you can't protect all the dumb people in society. True. You just true. really can't, you can't yeah, have yeah. all these measures. <laughs> I mean, it's like everything. It's like all these regulations and everything is to protect like this bottom 10% or I don't know, maybe I'm in that 10%. Yeah. I just don't think you can protect all the dumb people. Yeah. You gotta have more conversation out there. I think the vaccine is a great idea. I think that uh, my dad made the case. He said, any vaccine exposure is only beneficial to you. Bro, I just hope that we can leave this chapter behind us and go on to normal life. Because now, bro, I'm excited about LA. Yeah. I'm excited again. Like, we moved to Miami 
for a month. <laughs> then went to Mexico and I love Miami, it was great. So after staying in Miami, what do you think about Miami? Would you want to live there? What's, what's your uh, summary about Miami after spending some time there? In the winter time, I would absolutely love. Yeah. There. The summer time's way too hot for me. Yeah. But dude, I loved Brickle, man. I yeah. loved that vibe there and walking around. There were so yeah. many cute little like, I don't know if they were Cuban places. You or know what I like also about Brickle? It's that it's modern and new. You know, I'm, maybe I'm becoming a douchebag. I think it's happening, bro. I got some Balenciaga shoes now. I got a fucking Balenciaga wallet. It's happening. You know, I'm, I'm becoming a douche, but it's cool. I'm, a, you know, I'm embracing that. I'm having dangling earrings. It's all good. But um, <laughs> I like when a place is like also clean and has nice restaurants. I love modern architecture. I really live for that. Because I, I used to live in like, you know, Peru and like places that have a lot of charm and stuff. But now looking back, I, I really do prefer that nice, modern, polished, <clears throat> Like modern architecture, like steakhouse, bro. We went to some bomb, like Argentinian steakhouse and restaurants. So I love that um, about Brickle. But I also gotta say two things. Miami, the weather is like, <laughs> bro. It is so humid. I'd be sweating my ass off, but not be nice. Even with show talks, my balls be so sweaty. You know, <laughs> even with show talks. Um, and also, Miami. Uh, the most people I see in Miami are like. People want to party, you know? It's a little bit of a different vibe, which is cool. Mm. What do you mean when you say party? Well, there's a lot of cocaine, you know? A lot of people who look like you, they have like these Rolexes, <laughs> they have their yachts and stuff. And I'm just like, I want to be in a place where I have like creative people around me. And I think LA is more of a place where there's stand-up comedy. There's even the stand-up scene in Miami was cool, like some bars and stuff, but LA just feels more sophisticated. Okay. Bigger in okay. terms of, Miami's huge for like, whatever like latin music and, and and some other stuff obviously but la just is the entertainment capital of the world still <clears throat> so i think la will make me more satisfied especially now that i want to do more podcasts you know yeah. i want to do more creative stuff with other people so i think la is going to be the place for that i think the knock on la is that people think there's a lot of pretentious people here which there mm -hmm. is other people mm -hmm. are always trying to get something for themselves but like I don't mind that. You know, I feel like no. yeah, a lot of people come here to try to make it big and that's cool. I mean, we're here trying to make it big as well. Totally. And so if somebody's trying to get something from me, but it's a mutual deal, yeah. let's do it. That's I'll the base of our relationship. Like, <laughs> that's the base of our relationship. smash you out. Sometimes I, you smash I, me out. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Usually you smash me out though. True. But sometimes I do also. I'm just more of an alpha. How do you like when I smash you out versus you smashing me out? I have to be drunk because you are... Big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna switch a battery real quick. So Jeff, one more thing I wanna add. Yep. If we live together, if we moved in together, if we got a lease together and we live in the same place together, me in the master bedroom, me in the mini closet underneath yep. the stair staircase. Yep. Is it staircase or stairwell? Either stairway? One. Either one. To heaven? Stairway to heaven. <laughs> Anyways, if you lived in the Harry Potter closet, yeah. what would you think would happen? Would you, do you think our friendship could break? Because I know that some, I'm a little hesitant because I know that like, we have something so beautiful going on, but yeah. sometimes when people become roommates, right. then it like it, it, it can create fights. We, we still have to have we still haven't had any fights. You know what I mean? Right. What do you think is gonna happen? I think there's a big chance that we could crash and burn. And considering that I could beat the shit out of you, that spells bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, not the answer that I wanted to hear, but uh, okay. Back to you in the studio, wait, Mario. Wait, wait. No, I am really concerned about moving in because think of everybody that moves in. Think of all the marriages that happen. They yeah. basically get divorced. Like it's yeah. inevitable. Yeah. What's it? Sixty percent now? Something I mean, crazy. I got, a, I got, a, I got, a, I got your name tattooed on my butt right now. You know. Yes. Which, by the way, haven't even we haven't even talked about. I know. I have it's a tattoo that says Jeffrey. You see that? It says Jeffrey on my butt. It's a real tattoo. It's a real life tattoo. So um. Honestly, bro, like, I don't know, moving in is one step, but like getting a butt tattoo of somebody is like also what people say breaks people up. And it's been a couple of weeks and we haven't broken up yet. So True. I think we might be good, you know? I think because you did get that butt tattoo, we're good. Cause we're you good. could say anything to me. You could put me in the closet or underneath the stairwell and I'm good with it. Cause you got my name tattooed. <laughs> Any argument, I'm just going to be like, but Jeff, I got your name tattooed on my ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? What weird. are you going to say about that? What? You're mad at me for not doing the dishes? I got your name permanently engraved on my ass. That Thank you. real love. That is real it's love. It's not real love until you get their name tattooed on their ass. So like I said, I really enjoy LA since I came back and that's why now we've been thinking about upgrading. Because mm -hmm. Jeff basically lives with me now, you know? We've been traveling together in Mexico. You basically follow me, you know? Yeah. I asked you before, where would you be right now if, if I wasn't here? Dead. Dead? Yeah. I 100%. slept with your mom last week. Yes, oh my god. 
<laughs> so we got a hotel in Mexico and uh, <laughs> Uh, and I got it, it was a resort and I was there with Vita and, and, and Jeff and it just the combination was odd because me I could stay with I could stay in a bed with my mom I could stay in a bed with you I could stay in a bed with Vita but you staying with my girlfriend be odd you staying with my mom kind of weird too you know but we decided to like you know have you stay with my mom in one room you know she cuddled me I was a little spoon that's great I could see that yeah that's she's she's, so she's a little like more masculine I think um, yeah and I think she likes you you a good son-in-law I think she might like you better than, than Vida. <laughs> <laughs> yes! No, you're both blonde. She's so confused. I think uh, she, she, she probably thinks I have like two girlfriends, like two blonde girlfriends, basically you and her. Which is so, true. Which is basically true, yeah. So we've been traveling together. Um, you stay at my place when I'm not here, basically, you know? Yeah. So we have basically been living together. So now I'm thinking about my lease is up here in a month. And uh, I looked at an apartment yesterday, which is across the hall. Also in Hollywood, it's a two bedroom apartment though. And I love the place. Alrighty, room tour of the new potential place right here with Jeffy. Do the room tour again. This is in the shag room in here, this is mine. This is me. <laughs> so this could be like a nice little, I mean there's a huge closet here, you know, where you can hide in when you get scared. Okay. And then we have, um, yeah, it's, it's space here. So I was thinking bro, we can have a little couch for you in there. And then <laughs> we, and then we have a pop. This could be cool because the light comes in. We can have a podcast studio right here, you know, where we can like interview people, make it more legit, you know, interview my mom or something. And then uh, it's legit. And then you look out of here and you get a nice view of Hollywood, sixth floor, a little bit more quiet away from the noise. And the cool thing is here in the main master room, we have a little balcony. And I know Jeffy likes his ribeye steaks, so we could have, we can have a nice little barbecue, put it in here, and you can make your own ribeye steaks. We could be DJs up here, like. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And this is breaking news, guys. I was thinking about having Jeff and put him into the closet, you know? And so you actually have a little closet in the apartment yes. where you can come back to when you're on, on your travels. So you're not homeless anymore, you know? Wow. Yeah. You how, do, how do you feel about that? Officially inviting me for the closet. I am, I am, yeah. So you can, Entire I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put you back into the closet. <laughs> I'm trying to get out, but I'm gonna put you back in there, bro. It just came out. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but like, I wanna, we, have, we talked about also bringing this podcast to a new level because now, this is still in the experimental stages. I really love having these raw conversations, but I kinda wanna, Make it more official. I want to build an actual podcast studio, you know, a dedicated place where we can invite people, have conversations, and just have a bunch of fun, you know? So um, this could be that place. Second bedroom is going to become our podcast studio, and then we're going to be ha have more guests, you know? You guys can comment below also where you want this <laughs> podcast to go. I want still want to brainstorm a little bit about the branding and everything, but uh, yeah, just have guests that can speak their truth, and it's all raw and uncensored, bro. Yeah. 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 I think influencers would love to come through and have a podcast. Podcast is the dopest thing there is. You can say so, whatever yeah. you want, have yeah. conversations with everybody. Yeah. Feel out what makes them tick and then you uh, collab together. You can smash if you want. Exactly, yeah. You know? Maybe we can have like an, I think I mean we've had a lot of OnlyFans creators, so maybe we can have you know, we can have them come through, warm them up with a podcast mm -hmm. first, you know, yeah. then make a little YouTube video, take some TikToks where we like peck bounce a little bit, and then we smash them out on the balcony. Because yes. we will have a balcony. Is this gonna be like kind of like the Cock House podcast? Yeah, this is. Oh my god, that'd be great. <laughs> I also yeah. thought about because now the podcast is called Mario Adrian Uncensored. I thought about calling it maybe more Mario Adrian, but then it's too much about me. I kind of want to make it more universal, you know? Yeah. How about the Cock Past? <laughs> <laughs> the Cock Cast. Uh, you just wonder how many people are gonna scare off, though, you know? The Cock Cast? Sounds super inviting, bro. <laughs> the Cock. Yes. Well, to people like us, yes, yeah, but yeah. You know, to people not so flexible. <laughs> Bro, I love the cock cast. It's hard to say though. Say yeah. cock cast five times in a row real fast. Cock cast, cock cast, cock cast, cock cast. <laughs> you just say cock now. Did I get it? Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> All right. And uh, talking about speaking your truth, uh, I also want to give a quick update on Scrotox. Because I made the video, the Scrotox video, bro, it was literally one of my favorite videos I've ever made. That was such a good video. I don't know if you guys saw the video, I got Scrotox into my nut sex. Do you want to tell people who are not familiar with Scrotox what Scrotox is? Scrotox is when you get Botox injected into the balls. Whether you have some kind of insecurity that you have 
too small of testicles or whether you're having sex and they tend to come up inside you. Mine do that sometimes, but I kind of like they it. Do. Okay, personally. okay. And so you, I watched it as they stuck your testicles into the scrotum a little bit. What, like 30 times, bro? There were so many needles. I, I, I So first of all, people were wondering, because I want to be a bit more real about this, because the, the video I made on YouTube was like, was like a little comedy movie, you know, and um, it was highly edited, it was so much fun. Um, but yeah, now from a scientific standpoint, I want to give you the honest truth about my, my intention with, the, with Scrotox. I got Scrotox because <laughs> I need YouTube content, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't give a shit. Like, in the video, I made it seem like, oh, I'm, I'm so insecure about my bright balls like hanging lower and that's one thing about sarcasm people actually thought that was the case but bro i, I don't know like I, i'm sure there's people who feel that way and i respect that 100 percent i personally don't give a shit about my ball sex <laughs> i've never even paid like maybe i should pay more attention to them but like i don't ever look at them and we're like i don't i don't think my balls are ugly or beautiful or anything or too low hanging they're just balls bro you know yeah. so what's your, what's your verdict are you happy with it so you like, again verdict. again as i said as i said i didn't feel uncomfortable with my ball sex before yeah after i got scrotox it was the most pain i was the the pain you saw in the video was not acted you know you always kind of exaggerate and end in a way but like i was actually in pain it was Getting tattoos is nothing. Getting tattoos was easy, but that was, because it's your balls, bro, especially. My God, the ball sack was fine. Do an inject, because it's just like, it's a weird little prick or, some, prick or something. When he injected it into, oh my God, your dam, do you know what the dam is? The yeah. dam is like that, that muscle that basically connects your, fuck, it connects your, this is demonetized. It connects your anus with your uh, balls. That, that little, like, oh. it's called a dam, because it's like a dam, you know? That area, which is like some muscle, I guess, there. Yeah. In there, holy shit, it was the worst, man. It was the <laughs> worst pain ever. I'm glad you were there. I put your, your hand was probably like falling off because I hold a hell of bit, bit into your hand. Uh, it was very painful. And looking back, like <laughs> the result of stuff, definitely not, not worth the pain for me. It's also like I paid $1,200, which is a very, I get a discounted rate. Usually it's like $2,000. Um, because my boss after that, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I, I can't tell any difference. Wow. Maybe we didn't use enough units. Maybe I'm just not as connected to my ball sack length yeah. that I paid not boss. enough attention. But I, I measured them and it was not a noticeable difference at all. You know, there's a difference of like half, whatever, half a centimeter, but bro, that could also be if I just, you know, if it's a little warmer, a little cooler, you also fl fluctuate yeah. with that. It's like your dick size, hard to measure, you know? Yeah. I think my favorite part of it is when my guy or whatever, the, the assistant, who yeah. was a really nice guy and he wasn't trying to be sexual. Yeah. yeah. When he was putting that numbing cream on the <laughs> testicles, he's just, he's just massaging. He's like, Jeff, how's your day going? What are you doing tonight? How's your mom, how's your mom and dad? And he's just perfectly massaging them. And kind of turned you were into that technique, I could tell. I could tell you were like, because I know this looks technique. sexual, but it's not sexual at all, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like just caressing those balls. Yeah. He was like all up underneath it, too. Just yeah, yeah. right there. Oh, he's like, getting into it. Like, Jeff is like, we're gonna have a I moment. Need, <laughs> go, go, go. I need to go rub yeah. it out after that. I, I see that. I see that. <laughs> um, so yeah, Scrotox. I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel more, I mean, insecurity around penis, the, the penis, because that's more like you know, what's the actual, I think the penis is like the main protagonist. The bots are kind of like, you know, they're kind of like the B, the B plot in a series, you know? <laughs> you know, I remember when I first moved to LA, I was living on Wilcox over there. And Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a couple hot girls that worked at the reception desk and I smashed out one of them late. This is like 10, 15 years ago. I smashed out one of them and she told all the girls in the place that I had a huge dick. Cool. Which was a surprise to me when she said <laughs> Okay. So then this other girl really wanted to smash me out because she heard I had a huge dick. So I smashed her out. And I remember afterwards we're just sitting there and she's just looking at my dick and balls and I could tell she's confused. Because she's thinking, <laughs> she's thinking it's not huge. And she's like, you've got big balls. <laughs> but she just kind of omitted the penis. She wow. She's confused, you know? Okay. I blame it on her. I'm like, hey. That's what I'm saying, bro. I, I think I think you have beautiful penises. Balls. Both. Both of them are very nice. Thank you. I can say, I must say. I appreciate that. But um, <laughs> I think like if your balls are bigger, that's what I was saying. If your balls are bigger, your penis looks smaller. Yeah. Proportionally, right? Yeah. So I think, yeah. I'm also a tall guy, so my dick looks smaller, you know? It's also a thing, you know? This is not making excuses, but it's just it's, it's, it's a statistical fact, you know? So yeah, 
the bottom line is Grotox, if you want to get it, go for it. Might be fun if you like the numbing cream, somebody tickling your balls a little bit. But uh, it is the most painful thing, costs a lot of money, and I don't give a fuck about my balls. <laughs> Just gonna be honest about it, you know? Maybe yeah. the main or only reason would be if you don't like your testicles coming up during sex. Maybe, but that was never an issue for me. I never pay attention to that because I'm, I'm focused on like, I'm, bro, I'm more focused on like how my abs look. That's what I do sometimes. Sometimes I, when I have sex, I'm sometimes like, bro, have you ever had that when you look in the mirror and I'm just there and I'm like, my obliques look fire. You know what I mean? <laughs> I will say though, if you want to get Scrotox, you should 1 million percent do it with Dr. Saraga because he's very knowledgeable. He's very smart, super nice guy, made me feel very comfortable, and he's got a huge bicep vein. Yeah. The dude is True. ripped, you know? You know? I mean, bicep that's vein. all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say, so I really appreciate his. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest about it. He gave me very nice treatment, he gave me a discount, but I'm, I'm not gonna endorse something I don't 100% believe in, because I do, unlike you, have integrity. <laughs> True, true. Yeah, good point. Go, 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 go. <laughs> All right, so then um, before we go, um, let's do some, like, uh, people were asking, nobody was asking, but I was just saying this. A lot of people were asking about our travel plans and moving forward. So I just want to give a quick, after we did this, like, catch up, what happened the last couple months, where we're at in life, I want to give a quick uh, outlook on the future. So, Jeff Kasser, um, where do you think the rest of this year, 2020, is going to go for us? Uh, well, I really want to tour Germany, and I've told you about that. We got, we've got uh, some small plans for Bali, yeah. possibly. Yeah. And past that, I can't really plan because we could be dead. We could be. We could, in fact, be dead. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So. so I'm, like I said, I'm excited about LA now. I want to do more stand-up comedy. The main reason why I moved here in the first place. Hopefully, now it's going to happen. Um, I want to like spend a couple of weeks in New York now because I fucking love New York. I'm going to have a huge documentary coming out of my main channel. It's a series where I'm gonna be saying yes to everything for one entire week. And it's gonna be a huge project, so I'm excited for that, go to New York, meet some of my old friends, I'm gonna do some remodeling photo shoots. Um, bro, New York is my favorite place in, on earth still. It's wow. my favorite city in the world, like, <clears throat> for sure. And I just like, wanna go back there now, not as a broke model living with eight guys sharing one bathroom, yeah. But I want to go there as an established man. <laughs> Not quite. But I want to go there, you know. I want to go there with my mom and have a hotel room and stuff. And uh, just go back down memory lane. And from there, I think we're going to... I mean, we're going to look at the place. I'm going to commit to the place, potentially, you know. Here in LA, move, build the podcast studio. And then in the summer, I want to tour Germany with you. Wow. You know? Do summer podcast there. Social experiments also. I mean, that's definitely something I want to do. Because now that... My channel, I've always loved doing social experiments, but fucking COVID, like, yeah. basically ruined that whole thing, you know? Yeah. So now we're back, I bought this microphone here, where I can do street interviews. So I can go up on the street and be like, hey man, so, on a scale from one to 10, how gay do you think Jeff walks? 10.5. 10.5, right? exactly, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be fun. I have a <laughs> lot of confidence in this relationship right here. A lot of confidence in myself, probably more in myself than this relationship right here. And I'm happy for you to be part of this journey with us. Make sure to like this video. And uh, Jeffrey, anything else you want to you want to add? I just want to add that if we walked up to this audience right now, you and me, yeah, who do you think they're pinning as gay first between both of us? <laughs> <laughs> I do have the dangling earring. I think honestly, dude, ah, bro, it's weird to say because I think. You look kind of, cause you, you know what's gay about you? <laughs> the way you talk. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. It is how well manicured you are. You know, mm. you are very beautiful, pretty guy, mm. and you look very well taken. I can tell that you take care of your, uh, you know, appearance, <clears throat> which is associated with gay people. You know, whether it's true or not. I think I think gay people on average are better looking. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think. I think on that note, you, I think I have a lo little bit some, some more feminine mannerism sometimes. Yeah. But I don't know. This is Who a question do you think? for the audience. This is a question for you. Who looks more gay? <laughs> Comment below. Yes. I can't, maybe you should make a social experiment actually going up to people and like asking it like, actually, what makes somebody like look gay? You know what I mean? What's that? What stereotypes are attached to that? And can we break some of them? Because I want to break all these stereotypes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess my legs are crossed and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts. <laughs> yes. Besides from the appearance though, who out of us do you think is more homosexual? 
definitely you. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know? Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I think that might be true. I'm only gay on the weekends, but I think you add a couple more days during the week. I think I'm less gay in general, but you on the weekends just go more extreme. So on average, I think we even out, you know? Okay, I'm like a yeah. consistent level of flamboyant. Yeah. And you're like, sometimes you just go hard, especially when you film with Travis Bryant. Yeah. The you know, weekends I do go hard. The weekends you go hard. Okay. You know. Well, on that note, uh, the weekend's coming up now. Today's, today's Friday. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Like this video right now. And uh, yeah, watch another episode right there. Peace out. Most of the guys here in the house are straight. Does that make him not straight? Yeah, I mean, I don't really give a fuck. At what point does rape become rape? Mm. That's what I'm asking, you know? Yeah. He feels more efficient this way. Is it on? No. Oh, okay. It does nothing. <laughs> <laughs>